next one is uh, pond smelt. And wherever that picture is, where's the picture of the, the bug? So you flip it over, side. the pond smelt's on the back, huh? I was going to say it's on the back. Yeah, there's the pond smelt. The, this pond smelt I've used at Buck Valley and Elmore, which are both side by side up there, done real well in both of those. I also used it at Eagle Lake. I think it would work great at a place like Barry Any Any lake that has lots of small minnows in it should work like a chance. Okay, so this one you've got to cut some foam. I've got a few of them already cut out, and I've got a pattern here that I put a P on it so people know it's paper, not that, that you can use to trace it out. Because I've got about a lot of pieces, but I don't have a lot of foam. The <laughs> <coughs> what, what's the name of that stuff? The, the stuff we got right here? No. There it is. YSI something or other. And um, they make it up in, in, in like... They've got like a nine dollar one, which is like a hundred yards or something. So I mean, this stuff is, it's not going to be a big. It's probably going to cost you more to have it shipped to you than it is to. Why is I makes silk thread you can wrap rods with too? Okay, I have never heard of YSI so until I got this stuff. Yeah, but it's an American company. They're in. Uh, they're in. What's the hook, Mitch? They're in the Carolinas or someplace, I think. I think more. Okay, this guy right here, believe it or not, is a dry fly. Just doesn't look like. Now the guys, the guys up in um, what I, I just run a real base back again back to where the hook starts to make its bend, and uh, then I wrap back up a little bit. Get some mar gay white marabou, Mitch. How are we doing on white marabou? Done. Well, I got a little bit here, so we'll have to share on white marabou. Okay, this one here, the guys in, in Almodo that use this thing, which is where it came from, well, a slightly different tie than I'm doing here, but it's the same effect. What they do up there, they, uh, there's guys especially, if they've, got, if they've got guys that are having a hard time with a lot of other fish, and this is their go-to one because it's idiot proof. All you got to do is find fish that are feeding on minnows. And up there, they'll corral these minnows up in sh shoal areas, push them to the top, and the fish slice through them, they knock the minnows all kind of goofy. And then they run back and they find whichever ones are floating to the top. And so this is where you come in. Yours is floating at the top. And they just take these things and chuck it out like an indicator. And just let it float there on a floating line. You just lay in there. And they just come up and suck it up. And uh, you don't have to throw it very far. They said, they tell me anyway. I, I've done, and I fished it as a, 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 with a floating line, I mean with a sinking line. Pulling it under the water works for me doing that too. Caught a lot of smallmouth doing that. And I just use the, I just use the uh, sinking line to pull it down. So anyway, take this guy. I like since you're imitating the back half of the fish, I give it a pretty good chunk of, uh, of marabou. And once again, this is one of these flies that neat doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference. My favorite kind of fly. So I just tie this marabou on there, up on the top. Okay. Okay. On, on the. Um, to, tie, to, to start this thing off, what I generally do on flies like this is I take a piece of paper and I fold it in half and put it over my hook. I mark the distance from the bend up to the eye of the hook because that's the length I want this whole thing to be like I got right here. And then I cut a paper pattern out, draw it on a, onto a uh, piece of uh, foam. And again, I'm using the, the cheap craft foam. And uh, then you end up with a piece that looks like this, okay? And the reason I got this point in the front is I want a little bit, of, I want the body to be, I don't want to just <coughs> fold it down flat over like this or all the body's going to be on the bottom where my hook gate is. So I, I put it up in the middle so you got part of the fish's body above the center line of the hook and part of it's below the center line of the hook. <clears throat> and then I take this guy here, I wrap back all the way back up to the front. And I take a little, white yeah, white thread. White or real light colored thread because when you put this other when you put this outer wrap over it the way we do it here you're going to see the thread if it's not white. So then I take a little bit of uh, of head cement, put a little head cement on this guy right here. Keeps my keeps. I, when I didn't used to do this on the other style I was tying, my foam would shift around on the file, but this seems to help that. So then I take my foam, fold it in half, set it right up here like this so that it's lined right up at the tip. Grab that guy, which I didn't grab very good. 
<coughs> grab that guy, put it on there pretty tight, okay? So now you got this guy snacked on there like that, okay? Now this part here, you're going to have to, the tension is important. You're going to, you're going to actually describe the shape of your minnow by how tight you, you run your thread when you go down. So what I generally do, rather than let the bobbin do the tensioning, I pull out plenty of it and I bring it up when I'm doing it. So, so what I do is I start spiraling back, okay? And I space it, and I space it maybe a sixteenth or something like that. If I pull down, I don't know if you can see on that, if you pull down, see how it just crushes it down? So I don't want to, I want this thing to look like a fish's shape, so I, I go pretty pretty loose in the center of it, as I get towards the tail, I grab, I get a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter, all the way down, until it spirals right down to the end of this guy, okay? And then, this one's crooked, so before it does anything, I straighten everybody up, where I want it, okay, pull it down tight, now I take our magic stuff here, now, now there's another flag I got floating around here, this one right here, if you want to you guys may have seen it before. This one I see tied all the time in the regular patterns, and they're using that mylar tubing you buy that has the rope stuck Ed, inside Ed, it, you know? Ed, can you put that in front of the... Uh, front of the yeah. This guy, this was tied with the mylar tubing where you slide it over it. Then you have to bunch it up at both ends. That's what this stuff is sticking out here, and that's the way they traditionally tie it. And I would have done that tonight, except that I didn't have any mylar tubing, so we're using this one. Take a look. Take a look at that one. And... Um, <clears throat> But to tell you the truth, I like this stuff better now that I'm using it. You can get a better fish shape, and it doesn't bunch up at both ends. So I just take this stuff right here, tie that puppy in there. Slip off this piece right here. <laughs> then I go back to the front again, do the same thing. And this, makes, this is, reduces the lumps because now I'm going halfway between the lumps I just did. Okay, go in the opposite direction so it kind of spoos it out a little bit. Doesn't, doesn't have to be real critical. You just want a, a fish shape. And if you get, you got to be, I found out you got to be a little careful in the front. If you, if you make it too steep in the front and you wrap this on it, it tends to want to fall off of this guy. Okay, now, once again, I, I really like bulletproof flies because I'm too lazy to tie on another one. So I, Paint this guy with this with good old Sally Hansen's chair. Or any other head cement you got. Okay. Then take this guy here and you want to make sure you don't twist it now because you want it to lay on there nice and flat. So you bring it around and you just right next to each other, just wrap your way to the front. And as you, if it's a little bit lumpy and stuff and you want it a little smooth, you can put a little pressure on this and it'll pull the foam in smoother and smooth it out. Get a twist there. Wow, it's a little short on my length I told you about, Mitch. Should have made it longer than eight inches. You'll have just enough. Yeah, I hate just enough. I'm going to have to hold it. You guys might have some fun with this. Boy, I just barely made that. It also depends on... How, how you've done, you can, you know, obviously you can adjust your, your um, body, size. body size any way you want. <clears throat> so, basically, that's it. Can't, yeah, I can do is get out your markers and turn into an artist. This is as close as you're going to come to a plug without treble hooks. <laughs> so, for those, for those traditionalists, they can all cringe and go home. I don't care, this thing catches fish, so I use it. <laughs> and it casts, it casts just like a, you know, casts just like any other, uh, it casts better than a lot of flies, to tell you the truth. So I take that guy there, and since I've got Sally Hansen on it, you've got to let it sit for a bit. But I usually end up putting a, a another coat on top as well. But uh, I think it's going to work pretty good. Then to, I trim this off, and I'll, how familiar you guys are with, with, uh, with uh, yeah. mylar, but you don't trim mylar with a pair of scissors, you pinch it off, and I just... Yeah. Whatever. So I pinch this guy, give myself a tail looks about right, get a little bit of movement out of it, put it in the water, and that's it, except for eyes and all the rest of that stuff. Now, I don't know, I like eyes on him. If you look at that picture of the minnow, the eyes are a big part of him. 
And so I, I don't know if it, if it makes any difference or not, but I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with putting on eyes with a, with a stick, but that's the way you put eyes on. Take a round toothpick, cut it so you got a fat end and a, and a, fat end and a skinny end, and a, if you want, you can have one that's all lathe turned like this. Got to have one of these or it won't work. And then I just plain old, plain old acrylic. <clears throat> And you can just take these guys, I don't know how steady I can do it with up here in the area where everybody can see it, but you just take it when you, you've got a big ball of paint on the end of this thing, and so it automatically makes it round. So you just push it on like that, boom, you get a round spot. You don't have to, then if you're like me, you can never get the eye on the other side in the same spot. That's okay, because you fish can't see both sides at the same time either. So you got two white spots. These aren't as important on this one because it's such a light colored fly anyway. But um, I put those on there. This stuff takes you know ten minutes or so to dry, and then uh, actually you know what you can see better what I'm talking about if I don't put it on the fly. So you can see here if I'm if I put a big ball of paint on this guy, and I just touch it like that, it makes a nice round spot every time. And when that dries, you take it, turn it over, use the small tip on black, touch it in the center, boom, you got an eyeball. This is where you get this is where you get to get argued. So you can take this guy here, you flip it over on the back, and it kind of gives you a little bit of fish color here. And uh, like I said, these guys have blue, which I don't have, so it has a slight bluish tint, but I, a little gold in there kind of blends the, blends, the, um, blends the green a little bit. And it adds a little more sparkle to it. So anyway, you do that. That one looks pretty dry now. Where's that? Okay, now for the eyeball, I just I got that little black thing. I just sit there and spot in the middle. Got myself an eyeball, not in the center, but close enough. Pretty small eyes on this one, but anyway, and that's it for the eyes. So now you're good to go. There's a school of thought that believes the that on the middle of the eye is probably the most important part. And, and you can see on that on that pond smelt, the eyes are big. They're a big part of that fish. So I don't know if the fish key them or not. They do. They've certainly got big eyes for them to key on. 